all over to you. Okay, well, um, thank you everybody for coming. Um, my name is Liz Vanderland. I'm one of the research facilitators here in the Office of Research Services, and I have the privilege of starting off the presentation today uh, on grant facilitation and overview. And we've sort of organized it as the who, what, why, when, and where of grant facilitation. Um, and so we're going to do a short presentation um, just to go through what we do and then we'll follow that up with a panel and um, we'll ask our panelists to introduce themselves more, more uh, in more depth when we get to the panel, but just to give them a shout out and a thank you for coming. We have Tanya Doms from the Faculty of Science, Christine Ramsey from MAP and Elise Matthews from Nursing. So thank you so much to them for coming. Uh, okay, Michelle, if you wanna. Thanks. So who are we? In the Office of Research Services, there are uh, four grant facilitators. We like to call ourselves the dream team. Um, so I'll introduce myself again. I'm Liz Vanderland. I am the grant facilitator for natural sciences and engineering. So I primarily work with the Faculty of Science and the Faculty of Engineering and then any other kind of outliers who dabble in the NSERC grants and um, you might have come across me in the past if you were working on my tax. That used to be part of my portfolio as well. And um, I'll pass it over maybe to Barb if you want to introduce yourself next. Sure. I'm Barb Flynn, and I work primarily with social science and humanities researchers. And Samira. Hello, everyone. Um I'm Sumaira Said. Uh, I'm the research facilitator for health. I'm working with health researchers from like across the faculties. I've been filling in for Liz for the last uh, year and a half. So you might know me as the previous NSE uh, research facilitator. And that leaves me. I'm Michelle Beidel. I work on institutional programs. So those are things like Canada Foundation for Innovation, which funds equipment and lab renovations and Canada Research Chairs. And I've been around forever. So I know lots of people and have worn different hats over the years. So uh, we wanted to kind of give just a general overview of what we do. So we really dabble in kind of all aspects of a grant's life cycle. So just to give you an idea of what that consists of, um, it starts with the pre-award phase all the way from conceptualizing a project and finding funding support for it, developing a proposal and applying for funding uh, hopefully that funding is awarded and then we provide support for managing the funds and then um, when you get close to the end, figuring out the next steps for project closure uh, and then it all begins again. So we kind of are here for any stage of your grant um, and we'll just go into a little bit more detail over the next few slides about the sort of things that we can help with. Um, so when you're searching for funding, we can help and provide advice about funding programs. Um, we generally know for the main programs, we know the details kind of off the top of our head, probably we've worked on them long enough. Uh, if it's a new program, then we're happy to help figure out what what the requirements are and dig into the details for you to help figure out what would be a good fit. Um, we support partnership development activities. If you have a partner that has questions about a funding program, we're happy to help you and meet with them if you have, um, you know, could use support in that way. And we also advertise funding opportunities. So if we become aware of them or when we know there are deadlines coming up for kind of regularly occurring programs, then we advertise those. So um, if you aren't already, please subscribe to the research list. I know there's a lot of email lists and people kind of hate the square bracket emails, but just keep an eye out for the research ones because that's what we use for um, kind of our university-wide communications. So when you apply for funding, um, that's kind of a, where a main concentration of our support comes in. So we have quite a few different things that we do. We do want to highlight our tri-agency cohort program. So that'll be starting up again this spring. Um, so that program provides support for uh, the NSERC Discovery Grant, the SHRC um, Insight and Insight Development Grants, um, and some of the health 
programs, um, the project grant from CIHR, I think the SHRF establishment grant and the health portfolio there, there's not as much of a concentration of applicants. So that program is a little bit more fluid. Um, but we are open, we're accepting expressions of interest for that program right now. Um, so please connect with the relevant facilitator if you have questions and um, submit your expressions of interest. Um, the program itself is generally composed of a few different components. So uh, we offer workshops to really dig into the different components of applications in detail and provide an opportunity for discussion. And um, we try to include um, you know, peers, other researchers that have had success with those programs to help um, give you some additional insight. And then the other kind of main component is peer review. Um, we try to provide you a little bit more structure to get your components done early so that we have lots of time for review. Um, we can provide support for developing budgets. Uh, we manage internal approvals. So if the the grant you're applying to has its own requirements for signatures, we can help with that. And if not, then we can help you with the sometimes dreaded funded research approval form, everyone's favorite. Uh, we can help draft letters of support if those are required. And then we do provide feedback on funding applications. And that really ranges depending on the needs of the researcher and what time allows for. So it could be as simple as just a technical review to make sure that the application meets all of the funder and university requirements all the way to um, you know, a really in-depth um, review of the, the content and the, um, you know, copy editing and that kind of support as well. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, it's okay. So once your funding is awarded, we sometimes get the pleasure or the pain of notifying researchers of the results. We also communicate those with senior leadership and with our communications department um, to keep everyone in the loop if it's for a major funding program. Um, we will advise researchers on the terms and conditions of their funding, especially if it's um, a funding program that's either new for them or new for the university as well. Uh, we ensure that compliance requirements are met. So things like um, ethics approval is in place, animal care, if there are any other compliance requirements, cannabis, for example. Uh, and once all of those um, pieces are in place, then we're the ones that request the new fund set up from financial services. And we can also help with any necessary fund transfers. So preparing subgrants, um, invoicing agreements, those kinds of um, administrative pieces. And then as your project comes to a close, uh, we provide support either we can help with requesting extensions. We've been doing a lot of those since COVID, especially um, if you have other project changes or amendments that you need to make, changes to partners, changes to co-applicants, or if you're um, sometimes researchers move institutions, we can help transfer um, awards, all of that kind of stuff is part of the grant facilitation work that we do. And in some programs, we also provide support for reporting. So now I'll pass it off to Samira. So I guess now we're going to discuss why we do uh, grant facilitation. So as all of you know that research funding resources are limited and the funding programs are increasingly competitive. Uh, there is the landscape is changing and the requirements of funding agency are more complicated now. There is a kind of an additional layer of expectation to be included in all application, uh, including EDI considerations in research design to uh, dissemination of results, uh, research data management, open access and open data policies, uh, research security and cybersecurity. Also for INSERC, there is research partnership risk assessment uh, forms. Uh, we work with researchers to promote the UFR signature uh, research strands, which are the four uh, uh, priorities are climate uh, and the environment, digital futures, living heritage, and uh, health and wellness. Also, we try to align the UFR research with our uh, five pillars of the current strategic uh, plan, all our relations, which are discovery, uh, truth and reconciliation, well-being and belonging, uh, environment and climate action and impact and identity. Next, please. 
So here we brought together uh, a list at, or a top 10. It's not an exhaustive list. And actually, uh, we have senior researchers, including Dr. Tanya Dems, that has insert uh, uh, the Discovery Grant list of do's and don'ts and tips for application, which is a living document and shared with uh, Faculty of Science. And I, she was willing to share it with any U of R uh, researcher. And also, I have Dr. Elizabeth Cooper that shared with us another list for the CHR uh, grant. So we're trying to be having a collaborative environment, sharing experiences. So here's our list. <laughs> Number one, start early. Please start early and reach out to us as soon as possible, or as you think that there is an interest in a funding opportunity. Also, when you draft your proposal, be as specific as possible and have clear objectives. Uh, write to the reviewers and the review criteria. So make sure to know your audience as the expert reviewers, non-expert, and if interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary committee review, you have to make sure that you uh, talk, like talk to your reviewers and audience. Uh, number four is involving your stakeholders. So stakeholders would be your partners, collaborators, end users, take their input in order to have, uh, to make sure that the proposal address the need. Uh, also read the instructions and follow the instructions. <laughs> Uh, try to balance between originality and novelty, significance, and feasibility. So make sure that the impact is obvious and the research is original and novel, but there is a fine balance that we need to make sure that it's, the study is feasible uh, at the end. So also make sure that the method is really clear, linear, and re related to your timeline. So whatever you propose from research activities, you make sure that it's achievable in the timeline of the grant. Also make sure that the budget is reasonable, appropriate for the proposed research activities, and you have a detailed budget justification to uh, convince reviewer that you need the requested budget. Uh, take advantage of available resources that we have here at the research uh, uh, Office of Research Services. So we can provide you with previously successful application samples. Also through the cohort program, we have this peer, uh, internal peer review program that you could uh, be assigned to a mentor or uh, in your field and provide uh, peer review. Uh, also, uh, we have here at U of R current and previous committee members that we usually try to invite them in workshops to get their input and insights and because they know what's the, how decisions are made during those uh, committee reviews. Also, we have the tri-council leaders for each uh, tri of the tri-agency for uh, INSERC. We have Dr. Catherine Bethune, and we for CHR, we have Dr. Mohamed Babu, and for SHRC, we have Dr. Raymond Blake. So please make sure that you have contact with senior and mentors during preparing your application. Uh, last but not least, uh, don't look overlook the accessory sections or the additional requirements of the funding agency, including uh, knowledge mobilization on translation plan, EDI consideration, HQB training, or any other additional uh, section other than the proposal or the science of your uh, research. And yeah, at the end, <laughs> I would say, please make sure to connect with the researcher facilitator early and often to make sure that you get actually the quality service that you uh, require from our office. I will hand it to Michelle. So to get hold of us early and off, oh, sorry, that's the next slide. I'm gonna talk about when to get a hold of us early and often. Um, so working backwards from the deadline of the actual competition that you're submitting an application to, we like to have at least two weeks lead time before that submission date. Uh, as well, we'll set internal deadlines sometimes even three months or sorry, three weeks or, or more depending on the competition, just because there may be a large intake and we also wanna coordinate um, review with your faculty as well. So pay attention to those. Uh, we've listed some upcoming deadlines and important deadlines, uh, so you can jot those down. Um, Liz had talked about the cohort program, so the expression of interest there is next month. We have the internal President's Research Seed Grant and SHRC Explore Grant, which are um, 
sort of grants to pilot or their, their small input grants about $5,000 to get your project started so that it can be competitive for a larger competition. Uh, there's the NSERC Discovery Grant in, in November. Health has uh, multiple intakes as well. Social Science and Humanities has multiple intakes as well. So uh, certainly reach out to us if you're not sure about those deadlines. Um, and we can work backwards and create timelines for you. And to get a hold of us, uh, we're pretty flexible. We like to connect with people. Our office has moved. If nobody's had a chance to visit us yet, we're behind the Fitness and Lifestyle Center on the second floor of the Kinesiology Building. We're now co-located co with graduate studies. Um, and we have all sorts of nice meeting rooms. It's a new space, it's great. So please come on by. Zoom is super convenient, so we are happy to meet by Zoom. You can email us and we pick up the phone. So sometimes it's easier just to have a quick chat than send an email and we'd be very happy to do that. And I'm gonna turn it over to Barb to start the panels, panelist portion of our presentation. Yeah, so just to get us started, I'm going to ask each of our three panelists to just give a brief introduction of who they are um, and kind of where what your experience has been with uh, funding opportunities. If you've obviously been, all of you have been um, applicants and some have been reviewers and that kind of thing. So I think we'll start with Christine. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Barb, and thanks to, to everyone for uh, inviting me. Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so I am the Associate Dean Grad in the Faculty of Media, Art and Performance, and I've been in that position uh, for three years now, since 2020, and I'm also the coordinator of the uh, Interdisciplinary Graduate Programs in MAP. Um, and my area is film studies. I'm a Canadian film studies scholar, um, and I've been in the Department of Film since 1998. Um, so, Shirk, uh, yes, I've had great experience on both um, the application side and on the jury side. Um, I've had uh, a Shirk for a, a, a larger project uh, that was linked to the Canadian filmmaker Adam Agoyan. Um, that was in 2016, and it was in turn linked to another um, kind of an arts and culture curatorial program. So it was uh, quite big, and we got some good shirk funding for that. Uh, and I'm currently a collaborator with um, Michael Zrid, who's a prof at York University, on... Um, a shirk um, IG uh, for expanding the history of film and media co-ops in Canada since 1967. So it's a real link to our film pool here in Regina. So that's what I'm uh, working on now. And um, uh, you know, I've had experience on many of the juries uh, with shirk. Uh, most recently, the Connections Grant. Um, and uh, you know the doctoral grants I've done the the I've chaired juries on the Shirk Insight uh, in the past, um, so uh, yeah, that's me. Thanks, Christine. Tanya. Sure. Hi, I am the associate dean research in the faculty of science. I've only been in this position for one year. Prior to that, I was NSERC leader for the university for a couple years, um, and I'm a professor of biochemistry. And as such, I've been able to apply for uh, a number of different uh, funding agencies. So uh, NSERC, I've held NSERC funding since my arrival here and um, was funded by uh, SHRF a couple times. That's our provincial equivalent of CIHR. Um, I haven't been successful with CIHR myself. So, you know, there's always rejection when it comes to grant applications. Um, but I've been uh, funded by other uh, bodies like Research Corporation and AstraZeneca. Um, in terms of, um, you know, so lots of experience applying for grants, uh, both uh, successful and also being rejected. Uh, and then in addition, I've served as a panel member uh, for NSERC for a number of years, um, both for the DGs and the equipment grants, and then also um, 
I guess uh, did about reviewed for SHRF for about nine years, and then most recently as their chair um, for the uh, biomedical establishment grants. So yeah, that's that's my relevant experience. Thanks, Tanya. Elise. Hi there. So um, yeah, thanks for the invitation. Um, I am Elise Matthews. I'm an associate professor with the Faculty of Nursing, and I'm in on the Saskatoon campus. Um, I have been here for eight years now. It's hard to believe. I feel like I just started here with the U of R. Um, I've been a nurse for about 20 years, and my area of interest is in childhood disability. So I'm speaking as, um, as an applicant for grants, both successful and unsuccessful for sure. Um, my area of research is with adults with intellectual disabilities, and I partner um, with Inclusion Saskatchewan and their self-advocate um, network. And um, I also um, do research with five First Nations communities um, in Saskatchewan, looking at, at childhood disability um, and family experiences and um, improvement of, of services uh, locally. So um, the funding that I've been successful with, I have had some a few small grants, the Research Connections grants and the Align grant um, with SURE, SAS Health Research Foundation, and I recommend those, those opportunities. Um, I, I, yeah, I think there, there's lots of success with them um, and it's a good place to place to start. So um, I've had a, I held a part, SHRC partnership um, development grant um, and that helped me develop the partnership for which I received um, a, a CIHR project grant. So we just received uh, 2.3 million uh, for our study. So, so now I am um, very much in in, um, in need of the support of the of the research services office. So, great, thanks. I'm going to just ask some questions, and we'll put it out there generally, so that the three of you can um, answer them and probably give some pretty good advice to all the people that are on this uh, presentation. So what would be your best advice for crafting an effective grant application? So I can put people on the spot if you like, but Christine. <laughs> sure, I can go on that one. Start early, you know, some of times the, you know, the, the most simple things are your best bet. Start early, months ahead, like starting early is not six weeks ahead it's literally nine months ahead you know start early um and i would always say read the grant terms of reference from start to finish like four times so that you really understand what it is they're asking you to do um what the um the various um uh you know um terms are of uh how your grant will be uh adjudicated um, and you you really need to have kind of internalized that in order to really be you know accurate in and it's much easier when you really kind of understand what they're asking and how they've compartmentalized that then you can just use that as your structure and follow those instructions you know um the the, the structure is there for you to really hang uh <laughs> hang yourself on not like this like a skeleton you know uh so that the sections that that they give um you know um you know <laughs> what's your theoretical uh, basis what's your method those are become just the way that you pot it out and i would say don't worry about not looking original you know some people would be concerned oh well i don't really want to follow uh that i'll i'll invent it and i'll look uh, so much more <laughs> attractive no you won't because the jury is looking for how you hit those markers and explain in that small amount of space that you have for explaining what it is you're going to do. And they're just looking to, to make sure that they understand, yes, this is how you're meeting the challenge. Yes, this is your theoretical background. Yes, this is your method. Um, so I would say, you know, don't, don't, it's not creative writing, grant writing, it's a different kind of writing. 
Um, and it's very, it's straightforward. It uses um, in ways it speaks back to their terms of reference in a, in a very clear way. Um, and I would also say, you know, when you're following the instructions, truly follow them because there are those, um, those parameters, but you, you can't get by without them. 12 point font times new Roman or whatever font they're telling you with the margins. I would always say, when you start, start with that, set that up so that you don't end up with, oh, you've gone off and thought it all through and you end up with 12 pages, uh, whereas your grant has a limit of five um, because it's so much easier to, to, you know, to think through the application on its own terms. If you've, it's so much easier than editing the 12 pages that you wrote and trying to find um, the gist of it than to just set up the pages, five pages, this font, you know, single spaced, this margin. Um, Cause I've seen several people who, and it's good to brainstorm. I mean, obviously you're, you're, you're trying to organize your ideas, but I would say, those two tips follow the organization that they give you in terms of headings and use those headings and subheadings and really um, follow the instructions off the top and, and you'll have a much more uh, I think what that creates for you is just a clear pathway that says oh yeah these are the parameters I don't need to go outside of this uh, I'll make it easier on myself by just taking the path you know yeah great Elise? Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I echo obviously what Christine said, um, especially starting early, um, gathering your team, gathering your team's CVs, um, <laughs> this all uh, supporting documentation, especially if you're doing community research, um, learning the online system, um, mm -hmm especially CIHR. So learning those systems, gathering everyone, it, it, it really does. Um, I've, someone told me minimum six months in advance, you should start. So yeah. Um, and using, I would say using every single line of white space that you're allotted in that 10, <laughs> those 10 pages, you know, if you need to bold a sentence and put no space, but like, just use every, be creative and using every, um, space and as much detail as possible because they will always ask you why didn't you you know include this detail um yeah a few tips that I've picked up so um early on someone told me after I'd had a rejection or two someone said you know you'll never win if you don't play this game so just keep playing um so I have always kept that in mind um also I would say don't expect to be successful the first time um, and just set your mind that you're submitting, you know, this, of course you do your best, but it, it helps with the, <laughs> with any rejection that comes along. If you just think I'm submitting this now, um, I'm going to get feedback. I'm going to make it even better. So that, that can kind of help. And also just knowing that like lot that everyone is, uh, gets, gets rejected and just using that as an opportunity. Um, Finding a mentor in your area is really important. I've been lucky with that, and the research uh, office can can help with that. I've been pointed um, in those directions. Um, find a sample of a successful grant application if someone is willing to share it with you. This is, I think, just so key. Um, and then hopefully you're willing to share your successful grant applications as well. But that can help immensely. Um, sort of seeing what it what it should look like um have it proofed and this is why you start early like multiple times by multiple people because people will see different things um for CIHR I don't know about all committees on CHR but for CHR for the Indigenous um Health Research Committee I was told that um put in appendices I know there are other committees and other funding bodies that like won't read them, but so if you can kind of get to know your committee um, and they did, we put in a lot of appendices and they did read all of them because they talked about them and their feedback. So find out if that's worth your time. Um, 
especially visuals, diagrams, anything to make it easier for whoever's reading it to make sense of this 10 pages of condensed text, if they could sort of visualize it. Um, I, I made a list, but yeah, I think that's it for me. Great, thank you. Tanya? Sure, thank you. Uh, I love that we all have a uh, similar, you know, start early, follow the instructions, because uh, this is so key and it and it's become uh, much more apparent to me as a reviewer than as an applicant uh, and, and reviewing at the level of my faculty for, for other researchers, but also through, for the granting agencies. And in terms of starting early, um, I can't say enough about the cohort mentorship program, so much so that I'm joining this year uh, because I'm renewing my grant next year. So um, it is a way to provide you with a structure to, to follow through the grant and get, get information on the most up-to-date um, information from your, your uh, granting agency. Uh, and then you have uh, are given some time too as well to work on uh, certain aspects of, of your proposal and ask questions to other members who have, um, you know, I, I've recently reviewed uh, NSERC RTI grants, but I haven't reviewed discovery grants for a long time. Uh, also, in terms of planning, I loved what Elise was saying about, um, you know, planning ahead. And in, I, I would add to that uh, in terms of plan when you are submitting your publications. If you're submitting them any later than, you know, April, they're not going to be, yeah, they're, they're, they'll just be in some phase. They they're probably won't be accepted uh, out in the current literature. So plan when you're submitting your publications. So you're thinking about this, you know, a, a year or two years in advance of, of your application. Um, I liked what Elise said about lining up your, your mentors. I usually contact them at the beginning of the summer and I say, hey, I'm going to be submitting a grant this year. Would you be available? When would you be available to review my grant? Um, there was something else I wanted to say about starting early. Oh, yeah. And for NSERC, we track all of our highly qualified personnel. So um, that means that you're constantly keeping in touch with your HQP. You know where they are. You know what they're doing right now. Um, and, and you can speak to their success. So those those so-called, um, I think uh, Samira mentioned the so-called um, ancillary sections, they're really important is to show that you're a really good mentor. Um, following the instructions, another reason that we do this, I think Christine kind of touched on this, but you know, as a reviewer, you have up to 50 applications that you're reviewing in a very short period of time. And when you get to the actual committee meeting itself, you've got 15 minutes to discuss and vote on the application. So uh, in terms of following the, the, the guidelines, um, you don't send your reviewers hunting for information. They, they simply don't have time. It doesn't mean that they're not reading your application thoroughly. They are, but if they have to go hunting for information, something could be lost, right? They're expecting it in this section. And if it's not there, they may find it, they might not. So that's, that's super crucial. Um, and then uh, in terms of uh, that structure, some of the most successful grants that I've seen, uh, both on the health sciences and, and the natural sciences are those that literally take the, you know, the, you know, for the, the granting agency, they'll have a, a sort of a byline for what they want you to speak to, and then they'll have a whole bunch of bullet points. They have actually just cut and paste that byline <laughs> um, that, you know, as a reviewer, you see it, it's like, okay, and oh, and look, they've addressed all the points. That's what I do now when I write my grants. I copy and paste from the insert guidelines, and then I address each point as, as I go along. And then I come back to it and, um, you know, massage it and, and, and make it more uh, readable. Uh, in terms of, uh, so the EDI piece uh, was, has, is, newer to NSERC and my only experience in reviewing has been through equipment grants, RTI grants, res, uh, research tools and instruments. And those that were, I felt that successfully addressed that section were those that A, they're speaking from their heart. So they're actually people who are either have lived experience or they're, they're doing things. They're doing things with their group around EDI. They're doing things in their research around uh, equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-oppression. Um, 
So lived experience uh, or things that you can implement if you're a newer researcher, what are things that you can implement into your group? For instance, in my group meetings, I might have discussions around, um, you know, with my students, have you ever experienced racism on campus? We'll have a discussion around that. Um, and then what are some of the departmental uh, initiatives? What are some of the faculty initiatives and what are some of the university institutional efforts in this area? And and how does your field play in terms of equity, diversity, and inclusion, right? Like how well is, uh, you know, is your discipline represented? So I think those are the, the big main, oh, and, and of course, um, yeah, no, that's answer specific. So I won't discuss that. Okay, thanks. That was really good uh, points that everyone has made. Um, can you maybe talk now about the supports you've received through the Office of Research Services and um, if it was valuable or not to each of you? So, Elise? Oh, you're going out of order here. I am, sorry. <laughs> I thought I'd mix things up a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just, I just, I can't emphasize this enough with the starting early, like my recent grant, um, I contacted the research office probably six or seven months in advance, and uh, I would say I probably spent four months almost full time working on my grant. Um, now, that's because there was a lot of partners and a very large team, but um, in any case, but I was, and it was, an, this was, an, I hadn't applied to CHR before. No, no, I had. Um, uh, but anyway, I so I got direction kind of right at the beginning um, about it. this was a different committee that I was um, going to be reviewed by. Um, so yeah, I, the research office and a number, I've worked with a couple of uh, facilitators with Shirk and CIHR. Um, and I would, they've, they've seen so many applications um, that I found their advice really helpful, especially around eligibility and what's included. And they also know the success rates um, and whatnot. So I found that very valuable. Um, uh, yeah, tips here and there, um, reviewing budgets, of course, finding the, the details there and some hints. Um, the office has uh, helped me connect with a mentor, um, connect with people who've been successful and were um, would be willing to provide me with a successful grant application to look at. Um, some, sometimes some advice on being strategic and choosing additional co-applicants or, or PIs that could be, um, yeah, could be something from the research office, just especially their knowledge of the researchers um, across the U of R. That's another tip is really to be very strategic about including all the expertise that you need on your, on your team. Um, and the, yeah, so the, a big piece for me was starting a couple of years ago with my partnership development grant from Shirk, um, a very complicated partnership research part partnership agreement with five First Nations um, and a community uh, organization and two universities. So there was I need there was a lot of uh, technical expertise needed there. And then with this new grant, um, again, there will be a <laughs> a new and more complicated research partnership grant to be renewed and shaped. And, um, and just having sort of a, they really can provide a team um, around you and, and connect you. So financial services, human resources, partnerships, ethics, um, pointing you to who you need to talk to and, and, and knowing who, even which departments you need to reach out to. So, yeah. Great, thanks, Christine. Oh, um, for me, one of the most helpful things ORS has done is helping you um, get eyes on your grant by circulating it, because most of us would ask, you know, a, a friend, a friend colleague uh, to read it probably in the same field. But ORS asks people outside the field. And that kind of feedback has been just really great because it gives you the sense of, is this making basic sense? It, it's not too full of jargon, because when you get to the juries uh, with Shirk, you will be, um, you might have jury members who are in the humanities, but but 
not in your field whatsoever. So they will, and typically when they assign reader A and B, these are people closer to your field who they have on the committee. But sometimes it's not necessarily exactly your field. So it's very good that ORS will, will help you find a couple people across campus who will read uh, your grant and they... They really don't understand your field, but they can understand, <laughs> you know, that it's well written, that it makes sense, uh, you know, that you've hit all the uh, all the items that you need to hit in the terms of reference. Um, and I also must say, uh, ORS runs the workshops uh, that they do, and and uh, you know, so starting typically in June, a eh, Barb on the Shirk side, uh, the the workshop uh, runs and. It's, you know, it's just incredibly helpful to collect a group and then that creates the cohort for you that, you know, there are people on that, uh, on that group who can read yours and you can read theirs. And uh, that I think is extremely useful and helpful. Great, thanks, Tanya. Absolutely, so I'll just continue where Christine left off. Um, so, yeah, I can't say enough about the workshops. They're fantastic. I've uh, worked on both sides of them. And um, there's always, as a mentor, there's always interesting questions that come up that maybe I hadn't considered before that really informs my grant writing. And then as an, a mentee, having that, that um, mentor who's working with you back and forth um, throughout the summer, in early fall is is really really helpful uh and yeah i i had uh someone from the biology department serve as my mentor when i went in the program and um had, you know there's a slightly different lens on it as christine was talking about um incredibly valuable technical advice from from ors so uh and i think uh Elise, you mentioned that uh you know, so getting a comment from, uh, I guess, in the past would have been Liz saying, have, you haven't included this, <laughs> right? You've missed something, right? Even though I'm copying and pasting those points and I'm trying to address them, I've missed something. And it's it's probably something that, you know, each point is like, it, it, you know, it, it's contributing to the value of your of your grant and the the, the probability of not only if it's funded, but how well it's funded, how much money you're going to get. Um, uh, helping me find those on campus who can help me uh, and uh, really keeping me on track. So there has been, I, I know when I was applying for the NSERC Engage grant, um, I, I, the, the exact deadline you know, escaped me and Liz sent me an email saying, hey, Tanya, <laughs> you really should submit that soon. And I've been on the other side where um, Samira uh, emailed me uh, saying, um, you know, someone that copied me on uh, someone in the Faculty of Science who hadn't yet submitted their grant, right? So this is really valuable, important, thing. Uh, yeah, valuable and important, right? If you don't submit your grant, you're not going to get funded, obviously. So there's just so many things that ORS does uh, to help. Great, thanks. Uh, next question we've kind of touched a little bit on, but if you could kind of Talk about one of your most memorable reviewer comments when you were applicants and how do you manage rejection that I know everyone has experienced. So Christine, we'll start with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, I had a nice comment on the Adam Agoyan grant. And I just thought of him this morning because he's in the globe. He's got a new film and at the same time coming out with a, a an, art installation opera so you know and you know one of our best known for those of you who might not know because Canadian cinema is a minor cinema in its own country but he's uh you know one of our our best filmmakers and internationally known probably in more circles outside Canada than in but this was a grant and we brought him here to the Mackenzie Gallery and we got the uh, connections grant and the Shirk Insight and one of the reviewers said this is the best grant I ever saw in terms of supporting students with meaningful work. You know, nobody did a bibliography, like not that they're not meaningful. I don't mean to say that, but all of these students were on the ground at the Mackenzie Art Gallery working with Adam McGoyan, 
in some capacity. And then they got to be um, docents, you know, as they're called in the gallery, because they had been there installing this huge um, 2000 foot celluloid installation where the, the film looped around the gallery room. It's a long story. I won't go into it, <laughs> but it, it's a brilliant piece. Uh, and uh we were just thrilled to have him bring it here. It had never been shown before in Canada. It was it was developed in the UK, but had never come to Canada. So we brought it to Canada, and hopefully it's going to be shown uh, uh, in Toronto or maybe Ottawa in the future. But I was just so pleased because we had... Uh, we had five MA and MFA students and two undergrads who got the full stipends on that. And um, so I just thought, oh, that's very gratifying because I, I really thought that is exceptional kind of experience that they could have with this really renowned filmmaker. So that that warmed my heart. Um, uh, and managing rejection. Well, I would say just take the 10 minutes to be really pissed off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> first of all, they're stupid and they don't know what's going on and the jury's rigged and all that. And then five minutes for, no, I'm so stupid. I'm <laughs> worthy. Of course, they wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> well, you got 10 minutes for that. And then I say, off you go. Take two weeks off. Just, you know, enough of it for now. But no more than two weeks, and you go back to it and you say, okay, what was said? You go back with your, <laughs> our former faculty administrator, he had that wonderful phrase, with your big kid pants on, <laughs> and you say, come on now, uh, as I think was said, try again. Most people won't get them on their first try. Some people will, but that person will then maybe miss out another time. Um, you know, we have a, our senior scholar in MAP, um, Dr. Sheila Petty, uh, who is just a brilliant grant writer, and Sheila has been denied. And, you know, people can't believe that. But she says, I've not gotten them. And I just say, yeah, I'm, I'm some angry. <laughs> and then forget about that and turn back to it. So, you know, you do have to realize that We've all been in the boat of success and rejection. And, um, you know, just focus on the research, focus on the project you want to do, and focus on all of these kinds of resources that the ORS uh, can help provide to, you know, try again. You know, that's, that's, that's all we do. We, we try and try again, succeed and fail. Then we die. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Christine. <laughs> Tanya? <laughs> that took a turn, Christine. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So um, I think that the most valuable critiques that I've had have come from external reviewers. And I, I kind of classify external reviewers, which, and you have to learn how to read external reviews too. Uh, there's those that I call um, the the cheerleaders. Uh, there's the death squad, and then there's those who are providing constructive uh, feedback. And um, and so once you learn how to read those, and I guess you get a lot of experience when you're on the grant committees. But but uh, you can ask your colleagues <laughs> which category they they fall into. Um, but the most valuable ones were the ones where they were re senior researchers, clearly, and they were just like trying to ad advise my research program. Like, have you thought of this? Have you tried this? Like these, these are, if you see reviews like that and, and you think, oh, they don't know what they're talking about, let's set it aside and read it again, because there is so much value in there. Um, in terms of managing rejection, certainly I do some, have a similar process as Christine. You read it, um, you get ticked off, you set it aside, um, but then you reread it and then you digest it. And then if you need to reread it again. So I go and I, I let it sit. I let it sit for a, a, even a month and then I reread it. And if I'm still getting angry, 
then I'm I'm going to set it aside again, and then I'm going to and then I'll reread it again. And and as you do that, you're you're internally digesting it in between each each one, and ask for go you know your family and friends ask for emotional support. This can like destroy people's egos. I've seen people, younger faculty in my department, and I've seen them destroyed by the fact that they didn't get an NSERC discovery grant. Um, and then that carries through and then there's a negative aspect. So if you need help processing that, get help processing that. If you need um, technical assistance, get that from ORS uh, or, or from your colleagues. So that's a really important piece. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking from experience. I've while I've been on NSERC DG, like my whole career, uh, you know, and I was funded by HSERC, I one of the mandate of, well, now is SHRF is to like get a CIHR grant. So I took that very seriously. And back then it was called MRC. And I applied for like, I don't know, eight years in a row to try to get that CIHR grant to fulfill this responsibility of having had an SHRF grant, right? So, but I've never been successful with that. Um, I was successful with Research Corporation, which was an innovation grant. So they invited me to apply for like their teaching innovation side of it, got through the letter of intent process, failed, you know, so again, like it just, you just keep trying and you just get it back on the horse. Um, and I just consider it as, you know, the law of averages, you apply for a lot of grants, you'll get some, if you don't, you won't. So just go apply. <laughs> Thank you. Elise? Yeah, so um, I echo again um, what Christine and uh, Tanya have said here. Um, yeah, it's um, so okay. I'll start with my most memorable reviewer comment um, was recently for my most recent grant that was successful. Um, there was a couple comments that like this application um, represents a true partnership. Um, which is just key in that area. And so it was like, oh, they really got what we've <laughs> what we've been doing and how how we're gonna do it and how we work together. So that was really, yeah, so I'll hold on to that one, that one for for a while. And it's that external validation too um, that you're doing things well. Um, yeah, the reviews can be hurtful for sure, intentionally or or unintentionally. Um, and it can be painful, especially when it's pointing to things that, you know, you know, I need to publish more in this area. Um, so that's, yeah, it can hurt. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just, after you take some time, I can, you know, I think if you think about, you just take, take it as advice, take it as a gift, the, the, the reviews that you got back and know that, um, it's valuable. You'll do better because you've had these, you know, these experts review it. So, um, it's not personal, just take the advice, improve for next time. Um, as an example, I once received a comment and it said, um, you're not a faculty member at a research intensive university. And you know, that's one of those, one of those comments where it's like, um, okay, that's not a fair, <laughs> fair assessment. And, and you can feel really defensive about that um, and you know, this is not a fair comment that they made. So, but then it just means that the next time you apply, it was, uh, you know, you know, to make exceptionally clear the the um, vigorous research environment that you're working in, and the number of supports that are available to you, and just make those clear. So that's just, yeah, one example where you take the advice, <laughs> get angry, and then get effective about about using it. So, thanks. Great, thanks. Next question is kind of more for the ADRs. So Christine and Tanya, how do, what do you um, how do you support your faculty members as an ADR and helping them with their grant applications? So maybe Christine. Um, well, what uh, we do in MAP is I run uh, workshops uh, um, of our own. Um, for uh, PhD students and that's a partnership with the Faculty of Education. And so we've been doing that for three years. And from that, we've had uh, two PhDs with $100,000 each and two MFAs who have been successful. So we run a workshop where we start again early. Um, you know, I think it's, it's um, you know, imperative to try to, um, you know, get people on a bit of a, 
you know, on a bit of a treadmill with it so that you introduce what it is. We start that in June and then we run three uh, every three weeks over June, July, August, uh, so that in the case of students, um, they're going to have by, for the PhDs, you know, by September 15th, they should have a pretty well final draft. Um, so the point of running those workshops like that is that so people can have time in the interim to get on each one of the um, components as it's introduced. Um, uh, so that I, I'm hoping uh, that 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 will work for us even more and that we'll start to see, you know, more successes as as we run those. Um, and I also uh, um, work with Barb um, uh, on uh, her running of the shirk, uh, <laughs> the running of the shirk gauntlet. Um, and uh, we've started doing that, eh, Barb, like in yeah. a more extended framework. Um, and I think, you know, it's just more helpful to people to try to, you know, help them digest what the thing is over time, you know, rather than like workshops are good that like run for 90 minutes, but um, the ones where I think you can really help people start to get things done will have time built into them. And it, it's not that time consuming. It's just three, every three weeks over the summer and uh, people seem to make time for it. Um, and I, I read and comment on all the drafts uh, that come out of uh, MAP. Uh, I'm happy to read it. You know, sometimes people don't realize you should probably have like read your own grant 20 times before you consider it done. Um, that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to give it to somebody else to read 20 times because they might start getting annoyed. But, uh, you know, a number of drafts, reading and commenting, um, I'm very happy to do, you know, to, you know, the person goes off and, and, and then there's also that thing, if they've got more than one person reading it, um, you want to be careful, you're not saying contradictory things to the person, you know, well, they told me to take that out, and you're telling me to leave it in. So um, the way to, to do that kind of work, again, is to start early so that, um, you know, the person has a lot of time to make sure that, that, you know, all the boxes are checked and that, you know, this represents them at a high level, that this is the kind of research they want to be doing and that uh, we can send it off with confidence, uh, you know, into the, the internal competition. Um, and, you know, always just encouraging faculty and students to participate uh, in uh, all of the activities that the ORS organizes, because it's, uh, it's extremely, extremely useful. Yeah. Great, thanks. Tanya? Okay, well, after I signed up myself for the cohort program this year, I sent that email to all the department heads uh, to encourage their faculty to join in the sessions because I just think they're so valuable. Um, I've only been in this position for a year, so um, I'm, I'm planning on making some changes this year that I hope will help facilitate uh, an easier process uh, for for all of the uh, established researchers, I provide uh, a grant review, including copy edits. Uh, if they wish, I put it out to researchers that if they want more than one round of feedback as a as an established researcher, I uh, if they get it in by a certain date, I'll do that. Uh, I provide structural feedback, of course. Um, and for the uh, early career researchers, uh, I try to provide really strong mentorship and I make sure that they're that they have somebody in their department who can give them a, a copy of a successful grant um, that they also helping um, Michelle and I worked with someone this year who had a whole bunch of grant deadlines um, stacked up against one another and that was you know Michelle did an amazing job helping that person manage their time uh, keeping them on track um, so that's an important part piece for early career researchers, um, helping them with to manage their time. And I'm really flexible with early career researchers for new hires in terms of deadlines and so on. Um, I've offered other support in terms of, uh, so there was a 
a young woman who started in uh, one of our departments and she was from the European community. And so she didn't have anyone who was in the NSERC system that could look at her research grant. And so I went out and found someone that would review their grant. Um, and uh, this year, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, I'd like to have a series of rolling deadlines um, for researchers and uh, just let them choose their, so try to sort it out so that the department heads don't have too many grants coming in at once. I don't have too many coming in at once and researchers can choose their date. And, and I feel that people might be, um, you know, more invested uh, in terms of uh, hitting those deadlines with something a little bit more flexible. Uh, that's all I can think of for now. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, especially to our panelists, Elise, Christine, and Tanya. It was really valuable information. And thank you to everybody who's joined us. Um, I think uh, Stacy has noted that the presentation, the recording, and the slides will be available um, on the, our website, and the link is in chat. And if there's any questions from anybody else, um, you can turn on your mics and just ask. It will work well. And again, as we noted, like please contact us with any kinds of questions. Um, all four of us are usually always here and readily available to answer and meet with you. So please do reach, reach out. Um, and just to give ourselves a shout out for next week, I guess we'll be back next oh, yeah. <laughs> Friday uh, talking about the seed grant and the help me barb it shirk the, explore the shirk explore grant. So thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thank coming you. in on the chat.